Hi, my name is Ben Summer. I'm a musician, recording artist. Uh, if you're hearing this on iTunes, uh, on the podcast, please do subscribe. If you're watching it on YouTube, you got my channel there. Subscribe as well for weekly or sometimes twice weekly updates. And if you're online elsewhere, uh, hit me up on my website, please. BenSummerMusic.com. That's B-E-N-S-O-M-M-E-R Music.com. Uh, this is episode number two in a uh, uh, new series uh, that I'm broadcasting or, or video and podcasting called Deep Music Criticism. It's a, um, I'm in actually my 13th week on the blog at, at my website, um, but I'm uh, kind of going backward and, and kind of uh, podcastifying, if you will, those blogs I've written. I take a song that either tickles my fancy or makes me want to vomit that I love or hate. Uh, mostly uh, songs that I love, and I uh, break it down and devote you know a few minutes to giving re, uh, listeners real technical musical reasons why the song is great or it's sh- sucky or whatever. Um, <clears throat> last week I did Frank a uh, Frank Zappa song, my my guitar wants to kill your mama, which was uh, is an awesome song. And today I'm uh, I'm taking another uh, uh, taking a veer leftward or rightward if you will to review a Rush song um, called Presto. And this is, as you can see, for if you're watching on the on the screen, this is uh, a blog I wrote on this song a few weeks ago. Um, Presto is the title track from Rush's 1989 uh, album uh, called Presto. So it's the title track. It was it holds a special spot in my heart only because uh, you know I was 15 in that 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 year, and I had just gotten into Rush and progressive rock and and progressive music in general. You know, it it had been around me for a while. My my older brothers, who are you know six and nine years older than I am, had been into Jethro Tull and Genesis and Yes, um, and so I kind of grew up around the music. But it wasn't until I was fourteen or fifteen that I actually started to get into bands they they were into, like Rush, and actually pay attention as a autonomous thinking human being versus just a a, a pile of pudding. Um, <laughs> And so this album, Presto, holds a special place in my heart because it was the the, the first album that Rush came out with uh, at that at that time, um, at, right after I'd gotten into Rush. My brother had bought me the album 2112, which was their landmark 70s uh, prog rock concept album, um, you know, the year before. But this one is one I went out and bought on my own. It was a cassette tape. So the title track on this album has always been my favorite. And it's probably because of that personal experience that, pers- uh, that I have with the album. But this album is also my favorite of the bands. Weird because peop- a lot of hardcore fans who value mostly the uh, early days, the 70s, early 80s, is kind of the golden age of Rush, look down, still look down at this album as uh, still kind of suffering from the 1980s uh, synth pop uh, influence that al- almost all the uh, mid to late 80s Rush albums have. It's just too produced. It's not hard enough. It's not heavy. Uh, there's still synthesizer use and keyboard use in this album, although it's much less pronounced. You know, uh, it's it's viewed overall as kind of a bridge between that late '80s synth pop sound and Rush's return to kind of hard edge grunge, heavy uh, rock from the 1990s onward. But anyway, this song I love, and it is a bit soft in that it features a uh, stop-start kind of. It's not always uh, you know pushing ahead floor on the floor rock. Uh, beats, but it uh, it has acoustic guitar, it has some synth flourishes, it has a very kind of emotive vocal from Getty Lee, but it also is very hard rocking. But anyway, I'm just going to play the, uh, you see what I mean by the intro, take a listen. If I could wave my magic Strangers coming out of the rain the evening plane rises up from the rock. Anyway, that's the first verse and it starts slow and even when the in- other instruments come in it's still you don't hear a backbeat at all. There's no snare drum, no nothing. It's it's a it's a slow build. This entire album is a slow build. So First off, the first thing I love about it is Geddy Lee's voice. Man, um, 
I appreciate early Getty Lee from the 70s when he sounded like a higher pitched and more wailing kind of Robert Plant. I mean, his early voice was like just scorching. He would sing so high and uh, so piercingly. Um, you know, uh, what's the guy's name from Kiss? Gene Simmons called uh, Rush the, uh, the, the the Canadian Led Zeppelin when they toured together in the early, uh, when Rush supported them in early 1970s tours. But his voice on here is just still, uh, it still has that strength from his early days, but it's, it's a, it's a, it's, I don't know, it's more mature, it's more mellow, he's got just the right touch of vibrato, he's pitch perfect, and to me, he's just more emotional and more in control of his vocal instrument in this album than um, in his early days. So that's number one reason I love this song, and all the, all the songs on this album is for Getty's vocal performance. Um, so that's, you get a taste of that right there. The second thing is that is great is the arrangement and orchestration. I'm a composer. I'm, uh, and I, uh, you know, I'm trained in orchestration arrangement and to, to, to people like me, uh, songwriting, if you will, is not just about string, uh, stringing together, uh, a melody and a chord set of chord changes, putting it on paper and then leaving the fleshing out, uh, into a performance, leaving that to a producer or a band. A composer takes every element, the melodic, the harmonic, the rhythmic aspects of the song itself and you know applies the correct instrumentation arrangement all the things that a songwriter plus producer usually does in pop or popular rock music so as a composer i appreciate how this song is arranged it's not only does it have the kind of slow build uh, ebb and flow um but it's got a massive rocking section i'm just going to give you a taste of the, i gave you a taste of how it starts with the acoustic guitar and then builds back up. I'm going to give you a taste of moving from verse to, I guess you can call it chorus because they don't really say the word presto in here, but here's, a, here's the last first verse moving into the... This is the first verse moving into the first chorus. Anyway, that's uh, the the chorus. I just it's just lovely, beautiful, you know, um, uh, sparsely in, sparsely orchestrated, arranged, if you will, uh, you know, with the electric guitar coming in and the synth pad kind of uh, uh, filling up the texture at the high end of the fr frequency spectrum. Anyway, it's uh, it, it's it's the first first um, I don't know it's it's the first first inkling of a uh, varied orchestration. Blah blah blah. Anyway, move ahead. I, what I love is is two more part uh, transitions in the song, which is moving into the the kind of uh, a bridge section after the second cho uh, chorus, I think, into the guitar solo. It's just so rocking, and there's a key change at the at the end of the guitar solo, which is really striking and just really compelling. And I want to play that first. There's one more se uh, sectional transition I want to play, but let me let me play the one I just described. Uh, hold on. Okay. This is the second chorus moving into this interlude I just described. Don't 
So if you caught the key change here, uh, it went up a whole step, which is, uh, you know, two frets on the guitar or um, two notes on the piano. Take a listen. Listen. Here it comes after the solo. Anyway, just it, that's a tr you know perfect, simple, subtle way to provide sectional you know uh, uh, interest and contrast from section to section. You know, a, your typical classical symphony had related key changes all over the place. You play the same damn melody, same damn section. You change the key, and it's it's interesting to the ear and provides some contrast and variation. And that's that's what you know. It's an old timey ancient musical technique. And here Rush is, you know, applying it to a straight up rock song. It's it's very uh you know, it's it's not it's still not old. Anyway, that's the the last thing is the subtle climax at the end and, and this is also sectional, but it's it's just the way this the end of this song re repeats in a kind of a coda fashion. It always almost makes me weep how just um how uh how just awesome it is i think this song ends the album it's the perfect al it's perfect ending it's the kind of ending that wants you that makes you want the thing to never end just to go on a repeat and it fades out as a song like this always has to fade out to to provide that mood so i'm going to fast forward kind of the last as we as we kick into that and then i'm going to i'm going to bail um uh i had some other funny pictures to show but i've forgotten about them like you know since 1989, I figured we'd roll back to what what people looked like in 1989. This is what's in what was in the news when Presto came out. Um, that's a, I'm gonna explain that to you. You know what I was up to in 1989. <laughs> this is from my bio page. If you're looking online on YouTube, you can see me and uh, practicing my best uh, Getty Lee, Steve Harris, galloping bass technique with long, flowing hair and a big ass nose. God, puberty. What a bitch. Anyway. Here's the end of the song. I'm just going to close with this and probably we'll uh, just, just, I have one more word to say after this is done. So just hang on. fades out just a great song um th this was the effect i was going after when i wrote a song um from my first album whoops can't see it um saint martha from my first Ma album america i had the same same uh approach i was going for at the end but anyway uh there's the link if you want to check it out listen um that's it really um i hope you enjoyed it Again, remember, um, bensommermusic.com, B-E-N-S-O-M-M-E-R, music.com. If you dig this song, uh, if you loved it already and, and stumbled upon it here, or if you're just a subscriber and you're, you're hearing it for the first time and you like it, you probably will like my music because, uh, like I said, I'm heavily influenced by Rush, even at this late age. I'm pushing 40 at this point. Um, why don't you go to this website, bensommermusic.com, and get some free get three free downloads all you have to do is throw me your email address um uh and i'm anxious to hear what you think if you hear the rush influence in my music or not um uh, just go and get some free free swag and share anyway that's it take care bye <laughs>